It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, let's look at these Western Conference standings. This is a, on ESPN First Take. They're discussing sleepers for the Western Conference. I want to say right off the bat, I think the Wolves are going to win the West. I know they're young, and I know it's the first time they've been in that position, but I like the way their team is made up. They have an elite wing. They have a, a distributed the point guard position. They have a real four, which few teams have, and they have elite size. And their bench is deep and have length. Um, their matchup, their problem matchup will be whoever is in 8, 9, and 10, whoever give, is seeing them first round. That'll be their matchup. Because I think they'll beat the Clippers if the Clippers get through the Pelicans. And then it's the Western Conference Finals, then you toss it up. But the Wolves are my team. Thunder, they lack size, but they have everything else. And they run a real offense, real system. And they have Jalen Williams, who's a monster. They have two monsters. And Giddy, Giddy, you can leave him open, but uh, he's he's a he's another one who can get this offense going, and is a good distributor. The Nuggets, the Nuggets are the champions, but the Nuggets, to me, you know, last year they had an easy run through the West, and it'll be much difficult this year, much more difficult this year. Clippers, Pelicans, Zion is not winning them four games in that series. Clippers, that's a good matchup for them. The bigs match up Zubac versus Valentin Yunus, and uh, the, the Pelicans can score though. They have three players that can score twenty five points a game in Ingram, McCollum, and Zion. So that's a good matchup. It's just Paul George if they're healthy with Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard, they're gonna try to shut the Pelicans down. They're gonna defend, and I like the Kings. The Suns, oh, with the Suns Nuggets, if the Nuggets are going to get knocked out, the Suns have a great chance of knocking the Nuggets out. They match up well with the Nuggets. They have the big for their big, they have for Nurkic, for Jokic, and it's hard to match up with Durant. It's hard to match up with Booker and Bradley Beal. They just don't have a point guard. But they can stop that Jamal Murray, Caldwell Pope, and that Michael Porter Jr. nonsense. Suns match up well. With the Nuggets. Let's see what they have to say. The top four teams in the West are separated by only two and a half games. And then there's a fight to stay out of the play-in tournament with the Pels and the Suns currently occupying the last two guaranteed spots. All right, we got a little NBA squad here. Austin Rivers, <laughs> Kendrick Perkins, and Brian Let me lock in. Let me lock in. <laughs> All right, Perk, I'm going to start with you on this one. Which team do you have as the biggest sleeper team in the West? Oh. It's the New Orleans Pelicans. And, and I don't know if anybody on this panel is going to disagree with me when you look at this team and look at their depth. The only thing that was co that had people concerned about the Pelicans is Zion Williamson, the mindset of Zion Williamson. Same thing that I just said in terms of Zion. He, he got to win them four games. And when I say win them four games, he got to at least score 25 a night in four games. Play hard four games. I don't see him doing that. He'll win them two games. But I don't see... I just, you know, Ingram, maybe Ingram could drop 30, 35, one or two nights. But I don't see the consistency that you need for them to beat the Clippers. Clippers is not going to allow them on the wings to eat like that. And so Zion has to just override what's going on with LA. And he's not going to do that four games. Zion Williamson is engaged right now. He's he's available and his mentality is there. But when I look at the others, Brandon Ingram, we don't talk about him enough. A certified bucket getter on the offensive end of the floor. Herb Jones, what he brings to the table on both ends of the floor. Being a guy that's being able to be a slasher and knock down shots and a hell of a wing defender. The uh, only thing with the slasher thing, you the only way you a slasher is if there's somebody posting up on a consistent basis. Now, if you're saying Valis Eunice is the post-up guy and then Herb Jones slashes, now we're talking. But ain't nobody else on that team. I mean, every now and then you see Ingram post up. But most of those players are po um, face-up players. It's a face-up league now. Like, you talk about a slasher, that's Dwayne Wade. That's a slasher. When you look at Trey Murphy, size, length, athleticism, what he brings to the table... And so I look at C.J. McCullough, and that's the leader, who's, who's averaging around about 20 points. 
And I'm looking at this Pelicans team, and I'm like, nobody really want to see them in the West. And if they do, they're going to have to strap their shoes up. That's why I got them as my sleep. Love your picks, Perk. People don't talk about New Orleans enough. For me, though, I'm going to go out West as well and go to Phoenix, the Phoenix Suns. Yes, sir. We just saw them get a big win versus Denver, a fully healthy Denver. With that, that's what, that was my point about Phoenix with, with Denver. There's no excuses out there. They played in Denver and beat them there without Devin Booker. So if you can beat them without that or without a point guard or without whoever was playing point guard, they can beat Denver. They can beat them because it's hard to match up with all those wings. They don't have defenders for all of that. And they ain't worried about that Michael Porter Jr. Because they're both really not fours. Aaron Gordon is their four. But they play a lot of lineups with Michael Porter Jr. at the four. They're not worried about him at the four. If you're playing Durant out there. So they, that is a great matchup. If it stays like that, that's a great matchup for Phoenix to get out. I just, it's going to be hard to beat the champs first round. Out Devin Booker, by the way. Um, listen, you talk about their team. When we talk about title contention teams, we talk about star power. They have that. When we talk about role players, they have that. I'm even willing to say if we're talking best seven to eight guys, they're probably top two or three in the NBA if we're talking about roster. You have Kevin Durant at the top. You got Devin Booker there. Two guys that can close games, hit clutch shots, create their own shot, and create for others. You have Bradley Beal, who I think we have yet to even seen his best play with Phoenix. I think he's still figuring it out, as we know that takes time. Yeah, it does take time. It's just that I just, you know, without a point guard, distributing the basketball properly, like a Chris Paul on this team, we... <laughs> he's the one directing the play. Running pick and roll, guys open, but I'm guessing that's another ball hog. But still, in terms of you, Bradley can't eat if he's bringing the. You know what? They were running a lot of action at the top of the key, pick and roll action with him and Nurkic against Th the Thunder this past weekend, and it looked good. It looked good. It's just that when Durant on the floor, they go up the floor, and you know they're gonna give him every every other possession, give it to Kevin, and then get out of the way, and then. The Thunder Trap, or they put Lou Dort on him, and Lou Dort was stopping him. You know, that physicality thing with Kevin Durant has not changed in terms of you just putting a body on him and you can stop him. The Thunder did that. Put Jalen Williams on him, put Lou Dort on him, and it was stopping him. Or just outright trapping him. You know? One thing about Phoenix, it'll be him that loses them the series. He'll win them the series or lose them the series. If he ain't shooting a good percentage, they're going to lose. But uh, if he's not making good decisions when they trap, when they double, they're going to lose too. He turned the ball over five, six times just off of that this past weekend against the Thunder. Kevin Durant. And then also the role players that they have. Grayson Allen having a career year. Eric Gordon, a uh, uh, knockdown shooter. Royce O'Neal, an uh, underrated pickup. And then you have Nurkic inside uh, to you know throw around and bang around versus guys like Jokic. So... They could play multiple lineups. I, I, I think they're a team that could easily, easily kind of get creep into the playoffs and cause some problems. Perk, I like your answer because the Pelicans in the last 15 games, number four in the league in offense, number four in the league in defense. Mm -hmm. That's excellent, uh, an excellent spot to be in. And they don't turn the ball over. And they don't turn the ball over. You look at the Warriors. Anybody talking about the Warriors in terms of sleepers? They turn the ball over. Now, what covers that up is they're the best rebounding team in the West. And top two or three defensive rebounding team. And best offensive rebounding team in the West. So they get those possessions back with the rebounding. But they turn the ball over. You would think that with Steph, you wouldn't turn the ball. But, with, you know, I don't know his turnover ratio. But um, the Pelicans don't turn the ball over either. So... They're a nice little team. You know, it's up to Zion if he's going to be in shape and ready to go and win four games for them. But my answer is the Golden State Warriors, and it's really for one basic reason. Schedule. When you look at how tightly packed this is, the Warriors' schedule is a weapon going forward. They have the third easiest schedule going down the stretch. Now, look, everything that you said, Austin, about the Suns is right, but they got the second toughest schedule. Their last 12 games, go take a look at them, everybody. They're absolutely brutal. The schedule favors the Warriors. Now, we're talking about sleeper team. 
Now it's whether or not we're talking, you know, the questions changed, whether it's sleeper team to get through the West or sleeper team to do damage in the West. We talk about doing damage. Yeah, if Golden State can get to the seventh seed, sixth seed, they could do some damage. Right now they're in the ninth seed, I believe. And uh, in terms of scheduling, yeah, I mean, they see the Wizards twice. They see Detroit one more time, you know. But, uh, you know, if they're going to be in the eighth seed, Something like that. If it's in the eighth seed, they're going to have a problem. If they're in the seventh seed, we're talking about the Thunder. Yes, that could be a toss-up series. Both teams score. Both teams could shoot the ball well. Both teams run real systems. And now it's Shea and Steph. Golden State has more talent, but the Golden, Oklahoma City, they actually defend better. They're a better defensive team just off the eye test. I'm not looking at stats. Just off the eye test. You know, they're big. King Chet Holmgren can do a lot of things. And Jalen Williams is hard to match up with. If Wiggins is not ready to play, he can forget about it. Regardless of everything else, because you're going to have games you win and lose. These teams are flawed in certain ways. But that is really in their favor. The team that's right in front of them, Dallas, they played them three more times. The team, you know, uh, they have a much easier schedule than the Suns and an easier schedule than the Kings. I think the schedule is going to be a huge factor, especially in those last seven to ten games. The Warriors are going to be in position. And if you can get out of that play in, if you can avoid that, getting that sixth seed, not, you know, dodging all of that carnage is going to happen over those couple of days in April, that's a huge win. That's a big winner to me. I think the Warriors are best positioned schedule wise to do it. Now, again, most of the stuff that I do. When I talked about the Minnesota Timberwolves, I'm talking about their eighth seed. If they're going to eighth seed, if all the seeds hold, that's including the play-in competition. If the seeds hold the way they were. Now, it's, it's going to be probably totally different. You may see the Lakers in the eighth seed. I already discussed that the Lakers see the T-Wolves. That's a problem for the T-Wolves. But the Warriors could go up to six. If they go up to six, it changes everything. Nuggets, Warriors, I'd love to see that series. Because that's a series we should have saw last year. The Lakers stole their spot. They beat them fair and square, but they stole their spot because they match up better against the Nuggets. But the, the West is a toss-up. In terms of sleepers, the whole conference is a sleeper. But my choice would be Minnesota, but I wouldn't be surprised if Denver won. You know, I don't see Phoenix be getting through all of that. I definitely don't see Dallas getting through all of that. You know, the Kings, I can see them winning their first round, but you know, it's just, you flip a coin in the West.